You see, in an era when there's so much opposition to the true gospel, the true church, we have ample opportunity today, in this age we live in, we have ample opportunity to practice the commands of Jesus, fall from the Sermon on the Mount, the ones that I just read. Don't resist an evil person. Love your enemies. We have a lot of opportunity to do that. We're blessed. Yes. I keep telling people we are blessed to live in exciting times. We, we truly are. Yet the evidence is all too visible to me and evident to the world that we paint a very different picture as a rule. I'm going to say this, and if you have a problem with this, let me make this perfectly clear, because a lot of people have a problem with this. Get on your little computer and send an email and complain. Send the email to Jesus at heaven.org. Okay. Osama bin Laden, did you ever pray for him? Saddam Hussein, did you ever pray for him? People in ISIS? Well, of course not. We don't like them at all. That's the harsh reality. I want to tell you, we would not have half the Bible we had had not one Christian bold with the Spirit of God, filled with wisdom, filled with the Spirit, that one Christian had not prayed for one of the most hated people in all of Christianity in the time of Jesus Christ in there. Saul of Tarsus, whose heart and desire was to persecute the church, to kill Christians, to imprison Christians. But there was a man, Stephen, in the midst of his death, his execution, he prayed a prayer, and he said, Father, don't hold this against them. I believe with all of my heart that that was a gospel of Jesus Christ that Saul of Tarsus heard that bore fruit on a road to Damascus Amen. many years later. Amen. Yes. Do you not think that God couldn't reach and touch the heart of somebody in ISIS yes. and turn them from a Saul of Tarsus into a Paul to the Apostle? Yeah. How many Christians are praying that that happens? Mm. Not a lot. No. I think not. The unsaved, the unredeemed, don't even have the ability to do that. They don't have the power to love their enemies. It's the very thing that astounds them and causes them to search out the cause of this remarkable feat in our lives if they see it in us. They can't do that. They can't love the people that hate them. They can't love the unlovable. Right. They can do good deeds. But again, it goes back to most of that self-serving. It makes them feel good about themselves. Maybe it's just a tax deduction. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Love rejoices in the truth. By the way, if I talk about these people, that doesn't mean that we love their deeds. No, absolutely not. It doesn't mean that we love their actions. It means that we can get beyond that and love them. They're not doing right. Can you imagine praying for somebody that's that horrible? What do you think you were before you got saved? Amen. That's right. Well, I never committed murder. Did you ever, did you ever get angry at or somebody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go back to that Sermon on the Mount, true Christianity. Jesus said, you've heard it said, but I say, you, you shouldn't commit murder. I said, if you get angry without cause. Well, I never, hallelujah, I never committed adultery. Wait a minute. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you have committed adultery. That's right. We sit in our self-righteousness like little Pharisees sometimes. Say, I'm not praying for that evil person. Forgive us love. We need to examine ourselves and see if the love of God is at work in our lives. If the love of God is work through our lives, that he can use us to touch the unsaved, the unlovable, to be an encouragement to one another. Today, as long as it's still called today, encourage one another. Amen. We need to be a blessing to one another. I said we're blessed to live in exciting times. Let me tell you, they are indeed perilous times. Yes. They are indeed perilous times. And I'm going to tell you this, and I believe this with all of my heart. The greatest danger to Christians today is not ISIS. It's not a, misla a radical Islam. The greatest danger is false preaching, false teaching that tells you, you, you know, that you, you're allowed to hate them. Yeah. More Christians will wind up in the pits of hell because they have listened to false prophets and false gospels. 
and they will be shocked when they hear Jesus Christ say those words, Depart from me, you evil ones. We need to pray. Thank you. We need to think about, we take all these offerings to God, all these great things we're doing. The offering that God's looking for is a broken and contrite heart. That hasn't changed. That's right. That hasn't changed. A broken and contrite heart. We need to understand the amazing grace of God in our lives. We need to examine ourselves. Do you honestly think that you're, you're a Christian because you deserved it? Really, I mean, I, I, you've got to think about it. Spirit.